Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at the soft engineering strategies used to manage rivers. This is part of Paper 1, Unit C, River Landscapes. Many rivers are protected by soft engineering. This is using strategies that work with nature. They are cheaper than hard engineering solutions and they look more attractive. However, they can be less effective at reducing the risk of flooding. The first one that we're going to talk about is floodplain zoning. This is where land is used to minimise flooding impact by categorising land into flood risk zones and issuing flood risk maps. These are then used to guide planning decisions regarding new development applications. For example, land closer to the river might be used for amenity land such as playing fields, whereas land further away would be used for more permanent structures such as housing developments. This means the land with the lowest economic value has the highest flood risk, but if flooding does occur there, the impact will be low. There are several advantages to floodplain zoning. It stops development on floodplains, so there is less land covered in impermeable surfaces, which would increase runoff. It also protects habitats such as water meadows that may have been destroyed. These can then be used for grazing, so are still considered economically valuable. Development cannot take place on the floodplain, so urban green spaces are protected. It is also a cheap strategy as the only costs are those involved in admin, so for example drawing up the specific zones. But there are some disadvantages to this method of soft engineering. This approach is too late in many urban areas where development has already been happening on floodplains. And homeowners living on floodplains might find it hard to get planning permission for extensions or rebuilds. There is already a massive housing shortage in the UK and this is made worse by zoning areas as no development. As a result, some areas will see prices go up, which is very good for those people trying to sell their homes, but not so good for buyers. And finally, other green spaces might be developed on instead, which will destroy habitats. Our second soft engineering strategy is flood warnings. The Environment Agency monitors river levels continually and uses weather data from the Met Office to check for the risk of flooding. This means it can provide up-to-date flood alert information. The Environment Agency also has a flood map website and provides a three-day flood forecast and personalised warnings for different locations. Once a river has been identified as being at risk of flooding, warnings will be given out and action plans can be implemented. Flood action plans are likely to involve other groups such as the emergency services, the armed forces who often help to evacuate or rescue people and voluntary organisations such as the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Flood warning information is publicised online through news and weather websites and social media channels as well as on TV weather forecasts. Occasionally sirens and loud hailers may be used to ensure everyone knows a flood event is coming. The advantages of flood warnings are that they are cheap as they are done mainly via internet-based communications. Early warning means that people can protect their valuables and evacuate if needed. And they make people feel safe without the need for expensive hard engineering strategies. But there are some disadvantages to flood warnings. They are totally dependent on people listening to warnings and then taking action. Many people ignore them and not everyone has access to or uses the media or the internet. And of course, flood warnings don't actually reduce the risk of flooding, so there will still be a long clean-up process and people still may have to move temporarily. In addition, areas with frequent flood warnings will have high home insurance premiums and they may be hard to sell in the future. The third soft engineering strategy that we're going to look at is afforestation. Planting trees reduces the risk of flooding by leaf interception and root uptake, meaning that less water reaches the ground and the water that does reach the ground is absorbed by the roots of trees and plants, so there is less surface runoff. Afforestation projects are also good for wildlife habitats. There are several advantages of afforestation. Interception and root uptake reduces surface runoff. Trees and plants absorb carbon dioxide and other particulates, so air quality is improved. 
and biodiversity is increased through new habitats. On the other hand, the disadvantages include afforestation projects changing the natural landscape, for example, replacing wildflower meadows with artificial woodland, which will impact biodiversity. They also result in a loss of grazing land, which has an impact on farming. And the final soft engineering strategy to manage rivers that we're going to look at is river restoration. This involves removing hard engineering strategies and restoring the river channel back to its natural state. For example, closing off underground drains that the channel have been rerouted through. This can involve lowering floodplains to create natural water storage areas and also usually involves afforestation projects and the planting of wildflower meadows which absorb water and reduce runoff. The advantages of this method are increased biodiversity through new wetland habitats and increased water storage reduces the risk of flooding downstream. River restoration also improves the look of an area as ugly hard engineering methods are replaced with nature. However, there are disadvantages and these include the potential impact on agricultural land close to the river. River restoration can also be quite expensive, particularly removing the old hard engineering strategies, and it is much less effective than other strategies that we've talked about. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on soft engineering strategies used to manage rivers. Thank you for watching.